Hey, I'm Lee from Outback Fencing, and today we're going to show you how to install a cut to size aluminium slat gate. So stay tuned and we'll show you how it gets done. Alright, so what you want to do now is uh, to work out the width of your cut to size aluminium slat gate. Now, um, to, uh, because these uh, gates are cut to size, um, they're going to come in a flat pack. Um, so which means your slats are going to become pre-cut, uh, your side um, extrusions that you um, slot together and your 50 by 50 posts that are going to go onto a wall uh, and latches and everything like that. Um, and because of that, um, if you've made the gate, if you've measured the gate a little too wide um, when you've given us the measurement, you can always cut that gate a little bit smaller. You can cut those slats just ever so slightly uh, to bring that gate a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, um, if you make and measure the gate too small, you're not going to be able to grow those slats. You can't water slats, you can't make them grow. So if anything, uh, order the gate a little bit larger and if you need to, you can cut the slats down. But uh, in my experience, in my opinion, and my advice would be just measure it a few times, calculate it a few times to make sure um, that your gate's going to be perfect when it arrives. So when you uh, install this gate, it's just going to be super easy to install. Now, what you want to do here is you want to be able to measure uh, in between the bricks first. <coughs> now, keep in mind, some bricks might poke out uh, more than others. So you want to take a few measurements going from the bottom, uh, going from the bottom and working your way up towards the top of the gate. And then you want to find the smallest measurement uh, in between the bricks and use that um, as your measurement. Now, um, when you send us the measurements for your cut to size gate, um, you can choose from you can choose from the measurements um, standard measurements on our website. Um, but if you really want something particularly perfectly custom, just give us a call and say, look, I need to be like 15, 23 wide um, and we'll make it exactly like that for you. But you'll need to give us a call. We can't uh, do those measurements on the website exactly. Um, <clears throat> right, so for this, what we've worked out is um, 13, 90 millimeters in between the bricks. Now I'm gonna be using uh, some 50 by 50 posts um, for, for this installation. Sometimes you might be given 65 by 65 posts or you might use 65 by 65 posts or you might be using some other posts that are either water. Whatever, whatever it is, you've got to use those measurements. So in this case, we're using 50 by 50 posts. Now, obviously we've measured 1390. All right, so I'm going to get that um, measurement right. Um, so, you, um, so you've got your 50 by 50. <clears throat> so you want to take that off the 1390 measurement that I've gotten in between the bricks. So take off the 50 for your post here, take off another 50 for your post here. Now, depending on the uh, latches and hinges that we give you, but the standard ones that we usually sell on the website, you also want to take a further 20 mil gap for your hinges and a further 20 mil gap for your latch. So the deductions are take your measurement, take off the 50 off this side, take off the 50 off this side, take the 20 off for your hinges, take the 20 off for your latch. And that's gonna give you the exact measurement for the width of your gate. Um, so then take that measurement and tell us, or go onto our website and, um, and click exactly uh, the, the width that you want. And um, then you can go ahead and purchase that. But now we're gonna show you what we do next. Right, now that we've determined uh, the height of our gate, um, what we'll want to do now is to attach the post onto the wall. Now, um, the gate that we're installing today is 1800 high. So we're going to attach these posts onto the wall, but we want to give ourselves also a 50 mil gap clearance for the gate to open freely um, back and forth. So we're actually going to cut these posts at uh, 1850. Now, um, you do want to make aware as well, there might be a fall in the concrete. If that's the case, you need to level the top, uh, measure from the ground up for your first post onto the wall and put a little mark, and then use a level of some sort or a straight edge with a level on it <clears throat> to mark on the other side of the wall, because you might find that one will be cut at 1850 and the other side might be 1870 or something like that. Uh, um, the post will be um, 
uh, probably 2.4 metres long. So you'll need to cut these down to size with like a, a small angle grinder. That's what we're going to use today. Um, so yeah, we'll cut these down to size uh, with a small angle grinder with a metal, thin metal disc blade. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So I'm just going to measure these at 18.50. And uh, yeah. Right, so I've just gone ahead now and uh, cut these posts to the length and the sizes that I want. Now I just want to mention as well, uh, when you order our cut to size gate online, um, it, it comes with just the slat gate and everything you need for the slat gate. Um, you'll need to buy um, uh, the post yourself. So you can determine if you're putting posts in the ground, you probably want to use 65 by 65 aluminium posts. Um, for going in between brick pillars, I'm, I'm going to use the 50 by 50 posts. Um, so yeah, I just make you aware that you uh, still need to buy your own posts uh, when you order a gate kit, uh, cut the size aluminium slat gate, slat gate from us. All right, so what we're going to do now is work out exactly where we're going to put the post and then determine where our holes are going to be for our um, screws and plugs. Um, you can use whatever you like, but in this video, we're gonna use some uh, long batten screws um, with some ram set plugs. We're gonna put three in each post uh, in this example. Um, but you're probably better off um, using something like Dynabolts uh, or something like that from Bunnings. Uh, so what we did here, we've put the post in where we want it. We've leveled a post uh, with a small level and then I've worked out that I want to put the uh, where I want to put the holes. And then uh, what we're going to do uh, is just use a, a small drill. Now the drill uh, for what I'm going to be doing is you just want to make the drill the hole enough, just big enough, so you can put your fixing through uh, through the post. And that way, then the fixing can still have um, the end of the fixing, whether you use a diner bolt or a batten screw or bugle or whatever you want to call it, um, still has enough meat to pull that post into the wall. Um, so yeah, I've, I've pre-drilled the holes here, ready to do that. I've put this post up on the wall and I've leveled it. And then I've tried as best as I can to mark on the brickwork um, <clears throat> where I want to start drilling hole, um, my hole for um, uh, my plugs. All right, so I've got my post. Um, I've determined where I want it on the wall. Um, now, if you don't have one of these to drill, you obviously need one of those. Um, but one of these stepped bits, um, drill bits. Um, these stepped drill bits, you buy a good quality one, they'll last you forever, and it's the best thing I've ever bought. It's one of my favorite tools ever. Um, I don't have a drill kit or drill set anymore. Obviously, you still do need sort of the long drills for certain applications, but uh, for fencing, one of these is uh, the best. <laughs> now to uh, put some holes in the wall. Now what I've got here is uh, some ram set plugs, they're good quality plugs. Uh, they're about 50 mil long <coughs> um, by 10 mil uh, wide. Now that's what um, I've got on here, I've got a 10 mil bit. Now usually we're doing um, some other applications, you probably want a bigger drill bit, but on this case you want it to be exactly the right size so these really jam in there nice and tight. Um, <clears throat> then we just got your standard batten screw. Um, this is about 100 mil long, so it's going to go 50 mil through the post and then 50 mil into the wall. Now, if you find that your brickwork uh, isn't strong enough uh, for these, um, you probably want to upgrade then to Dynapult. And um, personally, these have worked for me, um, but there are some occasions where you really need that extra strength, so maybe I'd recommend. Uh, really just sort of going straight for the diner bolt if you're going to install these gates that way you don't have you can sort of just set and forget um, but yeah and there you have it uh, we've uh, successfully put a post on the wall. Alright, um, 
So what you want to do now, you would have had these slats all pre-cut and the, uh, the gate styles, the side bits for your gate and then also these um, uh, cover-up strips for all your screws that go onto the side of the gate styles, you put them on right at the end. But everything that you'll have now has all been pre-cut, it's all ready to click together basically. So these gate styles, <coughs> as you can see, there's slot holes for your slat to go in and uh, these are uh, friction fit technology so basically you just slide these in um, and they sort of um, sort of holds the uh, slat nice and tight um, but that's not all that holds it in what we'll do on the back of the style as you can see here as well there's um, screw hole openings and what you'll have when you order a cut size gate is you'll um, you'll have enough uh, gate style so these ones in particular the slats have tiny little holes in them uh, this is for, for, for screws that go through the gate style into the slat and pulls it all in together. Um, usually have two at the top, one in the middle, maybe one at the bottom, sort of something around that. You just sort of spread it out a bit and then the rest of the slats will just be your standard ones. Um, in this case, I've actually got gate slats for the whole lot. Um, it was just a mistake, but um, it doesn't matter uh, anyway. Uh, it just cost me more money. Um, but yeah, so basically these just sort of slot in. that you want to be able to sort of feel like it sort of clicks in now basically there's two ways to do this I'm doing it on the grass you might want to do it standing up like this but it's really a two-person job or you can have this sort of down like this put them in and just sort of pull them in as you go along now what we're going to do is just going to go in and slot all them in uh, slot them all in on one side, make sure they're all clicked in and then the tricky part is getting the gate style on the other side and just sort of working that in and slotting them all in as you go along. Start from the end and work your way along and slot them all in and then we'll show you the next step of the process. Alright, so now that you've got the slats in, it's the hardest part of the job. Uh, you probably want a mallet, not really a hammer and something soft like bubble wrap or a bit of cardboard and just very gently so go along, just make sure that's all nice and sort of in. And then what you want to do is go along and with these screws, these are for, your, for the ones that are the slat, uh, the gate slats, not your normal slats. So you probably have two at the bottom, one in the middle and one at the end. Um, you want to be able to screw um, a couple of screws in here. Now what I suggest first is put one in the top, just one at one end, one in the middle and one at the other end. Uh, don't fully screw off one side yet and then, uh, and then lay it down and do the same at the other end. Um, and then what you do is um, once you've, once you've done that and you've screwed all four ends, you do that just so it sort of so the slats don't pop out. And then you, what you want to do is you want to make sure your gate's square. Um, so have that post cap on. And to do that, you basically measure from one corner. I'll get it in a minute. $21.95 and this is $21.85 which is not too bad but what you want to do is you just want to jiggle these ends up and back and forth until you get those cross measurements exactly the same that way you know your gate square and then you go ahead and finish screwing it off and make sure it's all nice and tight and uh, that's pretty much um, uh, putting the gate together uh, next we'll show you how to put these on all right we've screwed all those screws in gates nice and tight the gate square now to cover up the gaps where the screws are on the uh, sides of the gate styles you want to be able to put this little clip in now this is also a friction fit thing a little bit difficult you want to get it in place so it's nice and straight and it goes in um, it goes in right 
Um, if you go sort of like, if you put it in like that, it's just not going to go in. So both sides are going to go in at the same time. Um, now, I use something like a bit of cardboard and a little hammer. Once you get it, the first bit in, the rest is easy. Do that again on the other side and then your gate's done. All right, so now what we want to do, we know we're going to hang the gate off this post here. We put the gate in the rough position as well just to make sure all our gaps and everything's sweet. You want to do that before you start screwing anything on. Um, but we're all good to go. We've got some really heavy duty true close hinges here. Um, so basically I'm, I'm sort of just going to go two slats down to the top of that and you just do the same two slats up from the bottom for the other one just so it all looks uniform. And basically just screw on this side and remember you've got some screws coming through the side as well because you've got like a, um, uh, like a leg. Um, from the hinge that goes that way. So fully screw it off. And then what we do is then we get the gate into position and screw that off. But I will show you how to do that in a sec. All right, the tricky part is where you probably need two hands or a couple of timber chocks or something, but if you're doing it by yourself, but it's easy to have two people. Done. So we've just put a couple of tech screws in. And as you can see here, um, one of these pillars or walls is quite out of plumb. Um, sort of making the, the gate not look um, in line with the post that we've put on the wall here. But I've only put two screws in. You just sort of go around, check everything, make sure everything's working, opening, and then you sort of, uh, screw the hinges off. All right, so we've hung this gate now. Um, as you can see, having two hands is pretty good. Um, if you don't have two hands, you can sort of just chock up one end while you're holding up the other end sort of with your foot and um, get that right. So what we tried to do is get this top right with the top posts um, so it all looks like nice and uniform. The problem that we encountered with this gate was this brick pillar was way out. Can't do too much about that. It looked a bit funny when we screwed the brackets on. So what I had to do is sort of, um, sort of move this um, hinges this way a little bit, um, which means there's a tiny little gap here. Um, and also it means that the gap's not uniform with the post here, but we sort of split it so it was, um, instead of all, all of it being here, it was quite a big gap here and a small gap there. So we've sort of split it to try and make it all look nice and uh, the best to the eye. But yeah, so what we're gonna do now, put the hinges on, um, which are um, the true close uh, safety gate hinges, they're tension adjustable self-closing um, and they're weighted up to 70 kilos um, so this is really what you want to use um, so this gate would probably be uh, about 30 or 40 kilos maybe um, but yeah so now we're going to put the uh, latch on and we'll show you how to do that all right so what we're going to put in now is our um, uh, lock latch uh, deluxe uh, so it's keyed um, I like on both sides um, best to really just follow the instructions that's given in the packet 
just uh, very clear instructions. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how how we do it anyway on the video. We're going to probably miss a couple of the instructions, so it's probably good to just read it anyway. Um, but I'll give you a few little tips and stuff of what you can do uh, when you install this. So first things first, just to determine where the lock's going to go, um, they give you this um, sort of uh, this sort of screws onto the um, onto the post, but it's actually got a bit of a drill template um, and, and a couple of little lines here. So you, what you do is sort of put that where you want it. I put a tiny little text mark on the middle line, and then transfer that across the post. So you've got a mark on either side of the post. And then I just get a bit of a screw. And this just sort of centers up your holes and stuff quite nicely. So you just sort of put that on there, get that right, and there's a tiny little hole there. And this just to give you a bit of a pilot hole. Now you do it on the other side. Um, it needs to be level. And then, we use our gold drill bit. And we just simply make that hole bigger. decent hole. We see I want to go too big either, just follow the instructions on what it says. I think it's about 10 mil, but it might be 12 or it might be 8. Just read the instructions. it's going to show um, past the lock and look ugly um, but one of the main reasons you don't want it too small because these lock latches need all the room they can to move the mechanism and if they're somehow touching just under the side wall of the aluminium um, you're going to find that the locking mechanism isn't going to click and lock properly it's really frustrating but this is usually where um, the troubleshooting starts here usually if you're finding your keys not turning and locking properly or unlocking properly or your latch isn't going down properly it's usually to do with these holes not being big enough. All right, Whoops, that wasn't meant to happen. So, now what you wanna do is get this all right. Now, I'm gonna have this bit on the outside. And so when you look at it, you just sort of want the, the lock and everything to be facing upwards. So you can choose to have this like this or like this. In this case, we're gonna have this on the outside. All right, so that's the case. Then you sort of just clip it all in and lock it in on this design in particular. So that's all good to go. Then what you wanna do is you get uh, a little rod. And that simply just goes in there and actually just clicks in with this, uh, with this one. Some of the older models didn't do that, uh, but this one in particular, you just sort of click it in. And then what you want to do is push that through and get that nice and center. And you want to cut this level flush with the post. All right, so you don't want it protruding and you don't want it set back. You want it exactly flush with the post. I've just marked that there. I'm going to angle grind cut that, a nice clean cut. This also, getting this length right is very important. Too small. When you push this button, it's not going to open up the mechanism. Too long, the mechanism isn't going to close and you're not going to be able to lock it or unlock it. It's just really frustrating. So they're really the two main things, getting that hole big enough and making sure this is the perfect length. Again, just follow the instructions and it should be all good. edges off that so it's all nice and neat then get your drill to the Phillips head bit and you 
we've got some silver screws and some black screws in this packet. Get them all out so you've got to know what you're working with. So in this, what we're going to do now is work out, um, this is the lock latch on this side. So obviously this can go on like that or like that. So in this case, that's the way we need it. Now to put that in position, you've got some tiny little silver screws and they just sort of go in the back of this um, and you just sort of screw them in. Um, sort of go along and screw them in. all good to go. Now, you're going to get yourself a couple of these black screws in your pocket ready to go. Now what you want to do is basically effectively put that in there like that. All right, but you do it through the post. So get that through there, give this a push so it sticks out and you get that in position. Now, when you put these in, you're going to have a bit of play up and down now that's your um, that's the hole that you've drilled out. Now, like I said, you don't want, really want it touching the mechanism, touching the um, the wall of the aluminium. So you sort of want to go up and down and sort of find the middle spot, and the same with this end. And that way, you know it's sort of in the center of the hole, and you're going to be all good. So then, I'm just going to hold that there and do some bit of tricky stuff. So up, down, somewhere in the middle there. One in there. Yeah, same with this one. Up, down, somewhere in the middle. Now, you just want to put another screw in the face of it like this. All right, I'm just going to put another screw in the face of this one. Don't fully screw this all off yet until you know it's all good. Put the key in the center. Now just give that a push. And you want to see this mechanism going all the way up. Come and have a look at that. You want it to go all the way up and all the way down. If you have that thing inside too long, you're going to find that this is up a bit like that. It's not great. You're not going to be able to lock it. So you really want that to go up and down. Now this is the test as well. So to unlock the mechanism, you fully go that way. But to lock it, fully go the other way. You hear a faint little click. That way you know it's locked. You're not going to be able to push this. It's not going to open that. And this is not going to open. All right? And to unlock it, fully go that way. You hear a click, bring it back to the center. You're going to be able to open that freely. And the same with this side. Simply click, and it's locked. And simply go the other way. Click, and it's unlocked. And then you can go ahead once that's all working perfectly. And I'm actually pretty surprised that's worked for the first time for the video. Um, just go ahead and put the other screws in and finish that off. And then all you've got to do is uh, put this on. So just keep it rolling. We'll show you what we do. I'll screw this off. And I've got a couple of screws in my pocket. Yeah. that to see it's still going. <clears throat> All right, now you might actually want to come in here, Zach. Step inside. Is everything there all right? Yep. Now the last part of the whole gig is getting that on there. So basically when you put this in, you want this to center, right? You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. You just want it right in the center so it just sits in there nicely. Probably best just to leave it in there while you screw it off. It can be a little bit tricky. Again, you might need two hands. What you can 
find is actually when you screw it in, there's actually room if you have it a little bit loose to slide up and down. So when you put that first screw in, just make sure that that's perfect. And that's pretty good right there. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and screw that off. Check that. All right, that's what you want. When you close it down fully, you want that to have freedom to go all the way down. Um, over time, your gate might sag and stuff, and you can adjust the hinges and adjust this as need be. Um, you know, if, especially if you've concreted the post in. Um, especially if you've concreted the post in, Zach, you're up there, <laughs> trip up. Um, yeah, especially if you've got concreted posts in, um, you might have a little bit of movement in the gate. The gate itself is fairly strong, it shouldn't sag over time. Um, so yeah. And that is how you install a lock latch. Um, one last thing actually before we finish. Is with our hinges, you want to come through again actually Zach, with our hinges we've screwed them all off now um, and then it comes with these tiny little uh, side style things just to finish it off nicely and they simply just sort of click in like that to cover the screw holes. Um, so yeah, if you want to come through Zach I'll finish that off later. and. Um, That's it, that's how you install a uh, aluminium slat DIY fence kit.